Hi, everyone. I'll give you a few seconds to review the corporate disclaimer. Hi, my name is Jason Wagner. I work with the cloud architecture and platform engineering teams here at Accian. Today, I'm going to talk you through a quick demonstration of how easy it is to build and maintain an operational data warehouse using the Avalanche platform. It really is a one-stop shop for providing high quality uh, and trusted results to your analytics customers in your business. We have a lot to cover today and not a lot of time, so I'm going to jump right in. So good analytics and trusted analytics require good data, but good data is really difficult to collect. You have a lot of diverse sources and channels, um, different velocity and variety and venue are often very different across your different data sources. So this diversity requires a mix of event-based processing, batch data loads, and ad hoc data integrations. But data integration is really hard. It's complex, it's time consuming, data integration tools are really expensive. If you've done any research in this area, um, oftentimes you'll see data integration is at a similar uh, magnitude in cost and scope of your actual data warehouse implementation. So um, because of this expense, it requires a lot of due diligence to make sure you can connect all the systems that you have today. Um, data integration tool purchase also requires a lot of due diligence to make sure you can keep up with your technologies of tomorrow and your future business needs. So you're often at the mercy of a professional services partner or an obviously overworked, underappreciated IT staff to get the integrations built and maintained. So our answer to this is Avalanche Connect. As an Avalanche subscriber, you get full access to the Actian suite of integration tools, which allows you to connect to over 200 sources, map and transform your data, configure, execute, schedule your integrations, process events, and monitor integration jobs. The Avalanche Connect platform essentially delivers three, the three main Actian integration engines as a service to Avalanche users. That includes Data Connect, Data Flow, and Web Connect. So the Data Connect engine been around for a very long time. Uh, it has over 200 connectors out of the box, like I, like I discussed earlier. It's full featured, connect to anything. You can build simple maps, complex transformations. You can build transactional aware data integrations complete with commit and rollback logic. So for example, maybe you need to load eight tables within a database. And if the seventh table fails for whatever reason, you need to roll back the other, the first six. Um, you can do that with Data Connect, uh, or you know, wait and commit after the eighth table successfully loads. Um, it really is the Swiss Army knife of data integration. Actium Data Flow is the second engine you have access to. The key to Data Flow is automatic parallelization, maximum throughput, squeezing every last drop of performance out of commodity hardware whether you're talking about a single machine, a single VM, or across a cluster, data flow can automatically detect what cores are available and utilize those to their full potential. Uh, I think of it at, you know, as a wood chipper compared to the Swiss Army knife. They both have their purpose. Um, you wouldn't want to use a Swiss Army knife to uh, cut, cut down a tree in your yard, uh, but you wouldn't want to use a wood chipper to do some delicate carving um, on a piece of wood. Acting Web Connect, it's designed specifically to make it easy to process and load JSON data and NoSQL data from across the web. With any amount of nesting and complexity, it automatically normalizes the data for you and makes it, uh, you know, puts it in an analytics ready format as soon as you load it. So today's really just part one. It's so the basics of loading and looking at your data within your Avalanche warehouse. We'll have, uh, we'll continue this series in the future, but today we're gonna look at warehouse configuration and how that enables data integration into your warehouse. We'll talk about loading data from your desktop. 
and we'll talk about the Web Connect engine and loading JSON data from across the web. And then finally, we'll close out today um, reviewing how you can connect a BI tool such as Looker to your warehouse to start exploring your data and building dashboards for your analytics customers. So topic one, warehouse configuration. Your warehouse has a built-in firewall, which is really important to uh, protect your data. Uh, we'll talk about how you can manage the IP address security and access to your warehouse. Uh, we'll also talk about understanding the connection information for your warehouse and how you can connect different tools and clients to your warehouse to get the full potential of your data. And we'll also talk about how to create an integration user for your warehouse. Uh, this is important for tools that may not support OAuth or device flows, uh, which there are quite, quite a few. Uh, this also allows you to really understand uh, where your data is coming from. And we'll talk about that a little more. And I'm gonna share my screen here. So I have a warehouse started here for this demonstration. It takes about four or five minutes to start a warehouse. It's really fast. Uh, we obviously don't have time to do that today, but uh, I just wanna point out the different configuration pieces here that enable your integrations. So the first piece is your firewall information, and that is this IP allow list. Um, if you look in here, I have several entries in here, and I'm gonna open up the detail view and talk about these a little more. So the first six entries here are for Avalanche Connect. These are enabled by default. You still have full control and you can delete these um, or manage these however you see fit. Uh, of course, that may reduce the access you have to the integration side of the platform. Um, but you do have full control over anything that connects to your warehouse. So keep that in mind. These are just created by default. Uh, the second piece here is this home IP address. This is how I would connect from my desktop into my, into my warehouse and view it with a SQL client or with a desktop BI tool such as Tableau. Uh, you can see I have two for home here. We're trying out a new VPN service here at Accian, so I get a little different IP address for that. You may have two or three of these, uh, you know, depending on how often you move around. Uh, you may have one for your home office, one for your office, maybe one for uh, another corporate office that you visit. Uh, but again, you are in full control of these IP addresses. And then the last uh, five here we'll look at are the Looker IP addresses. Looker is a cloud application. So we need to make sure that it has access to come in and read out of our warehouse. Uh, and these are the uh, published IP addresses for the Looker instances in the United States, which is what we're using today. The second piece of warehouse configuration that we want to look at are connections. This, this has all of the information that you need to connect to your database in a common fashion. So the common properties, this includes the host name of your warehouse, the database name, uh, the JDBC port and the ODBC port. Uh, but we also have these set up in different configurations depending on what you're using to connect. So Typically, ODBC requires a connection string. We already have that set up for you. You just cut and paste this into your ODBC client. Same thing for JDBC. You'll notice it's a little bit different, but this will work with any JDBC driver. Um, today, we're also going to be looking at uh, my desktop SQL client, dBeaver. So here, are, it uses JDBC, so you'll see it's the same as any other JDBC client. And I'll show you that where to configure that in the application in just a minute. And then the same with Looker. So Looker has a page where you set up the connections and we'll look at that again later in the demonstration. Um, but essentially we've given you all of the pertinent information that you need to connect your Looker instance to your warehouse. And then last but not least, let's talk about um, setting up an integration user. 
So when you're automating integrations, you want to be able to you you want to be able to connect to your warehouse without any human interaction. So in this case, what I did was set up a particular user. You look in the users table. If I preview this table, here's who I'm logged in as: Jason Wagner at Hotmail. Um, and then I've also created another user called Loader, but this is what I'm going to use for my automated loads into, into my warehouse. And we'll view the differences of what the data looks like depending on how you load it and the schema changes and that sort of thing um, in just a second. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at is loading data from your desktop. So the key here, um, I, I think this is a, a good stage to kind of talk about data warehouses, data warehouses in general. Um, we want to dress for success. So in your data warehouse, the more data, the better. Um, and even more important, the more standardized data that we can load into your warehouse and join with data from other sources, uh, your overall data quality will improve tremendously. And, um, you know, when you're connecting to a CRM and an ERP, um, a finance application and spreadsheets, there there's all kinds of room for error. What, you know, whether it's a state code abbreviation or a postal code or a city name. Uh, so any kind of standardized data that you can bring into your warehouse up front that will really improve your overall data quality and your uh, the trust that your analytics customers have in the results that they get um, when they're looking at the data. So we're gonna talk about two things here related to desktop loading, how to load a CSV file, and then how to correct, uh, we're gonna see a data type issue and how to correct that. So I'm gonna share my screen one more time here. So we make it really easy for you to load data from your desktop in Avalanche. You can come to the integrations tab here and click desktop data load. And you can have multiple warehouses, of course. So I'm gonna select the one that I have set up for this. HDC 2021. And I'm going to upload this data as the, the user that I'm logged in as currently. And what I, the, the data I'm going to load today are uh, zip codes in the US. So I'm just going to call this table of postal codes. Um, it's not a whole lot of data, so I'm just going to replace the table every time. And then if we look down here, I'm just going to drag and drop the CSV file with my data on here, and I'm going to use all the default options. So the, the default options, we will auto detect different pieces of um, the data based on what's in this file. So we'll auto detect the field separator, the record separator, uh, quotes, character substitutions, and um, the character set. So I'm not going to touch that here. I'm just going to upload the data directly. Okay, so it's uploaded. If something went wrong, uh, we generate a log file for each load, so you can go in and look at the details of, of what happened, but it looks like this finished okay. So now I'm gonna come in here to my uh, SQL client and look at the data a little bit. So you can see I loaded this as my web user, and it created this new table Postal codes. Uh, 
So you can see there's there's a lot of data out of this file, right? I've got the city name for the zip code, the state name, the state abbreviation, um, the county name, the time zone. So I can get some uh, some pretty good enrichment of source data um, to add and mix up and join with any of the data from some of my different sources. Okay, so next we'll look at the JSON data loader. Uh, we're gonna look at some SpaceX data for this, but JSON APIs are everywhere, all across the web. And um, what we wanna be able to do is take hierarchical JSON data, which can be very complex and hard to read, and nor denormalize that and load it into our warehouse. So we'll share my screen one more time. And this time I will go to the JSON data load under integrations. Okay, so from here you can see there are already quite a few pre-configured sources. Um, I'm going to look today at some SpaceX data, but you can very easily connect to any custom JSON API here. Give it a name, give it a URL, and you can connect to multiple data sources. Today we're going to look at this particular SpaceX data. Uh, we'll look at payloads here. This is essentially um, you know, the capsules and different things that they're actually launching on their rockets into space. So I'm going to just pick the default SpaceX data. Uh, there are advanced settings, I'll just show you, but all of this is set up by default. We've already set, this already has interpreted the different data sets within this API, capsules, cores. Um, eventually we're gonna look at payloads today, which is right here. But I'm not gonna change any of the default information. I'm just gonna add this source. Then I already have a pre-configured destination here. And the destination is my warehouse. So I've named it the same thing as my warehouse name. You can see I've used the JDBC connection information that we talked about earlier. And then since I want to eventually automate this, I'm going to use my integration user that I created earlier and the password for that user and drop table if it exists. Again, all simple default information in this case. And then I want to look at payload data. And now if I come in here under my loader schema, because I loaded this as the loader user, See, I have a table called payloads.
And if I query this table, refresh my connection. You can see I've loaded all of this information about the type uh, the, the type of orbit, the regime, um, different IDs, and the names of this payload data. So I've taken all of this JSON data and flattened it out and readied it for analytics so that it's very easy to use within my warehouse. Okay, so the last thing we're going to talk today is how to set up um, a BI tool such as Looker. And uh, Look has, Looker has a concept of a Look ML project, how to create that, and then how to explore your data using that. So. If I log in to Looker, I can come into the administration section and I want to set up a connection. And I've pre configured one here. This is very similar to what I did in the JSON, the WebConnect JSON data loader or in my DBeaver client. I'm going to edit this just to show you. But you can see that um, I've created information about the dialect that it uses. So this tells it to use um, Acting Avalanche SQL, which is, happens to be the same as uh, all of our other SQL engines use the same SQL language. Uh, the remote host port and port, the database and the username. Again, I'm going to connect using my integration user. And just a reminder. If we look back at the connection information, we have one pre-configured here for Looker to tell you exactly what to put into those fields, right? So if I look at this connection, I just cut and pasted those values directly from my warehouse details to my Looker connection. And then I can test these settings. And yes, it can connect. So the next thing that we want to do is use this connection to build what's called a look ML project. Which essentially builds the objects that you can explore and expose through your um, through your dashboards within looker. So if I look in here. See, from my connection, it's automatically built all of these different explore definitions for me based on the tables that are available inside of my database. Again, today we're going to look at payloads specifically. Um, but now everything is in place for me to start exploring this data. So now if I come to the Explore tab, I can see that I have access now to this Avalanche Connect HDC 2021 uh, Look ML project, and I want to explore payloads. So all I have to do here, I already have the schema imported from my table. So I can add 
different columns out of this schema to the views that my analytics customers are able to see. So I may want to expose some of this. I may want to expose all of this, but I already have it in my warehouse. So I can make these kinds of changes on the fly, uh, however I see fit. In this case, I want to look at the ID, the orbit, and the type. If I run this, Now I'm able to um, start exploring the data that I've loaded into my warehouse and my users can use these views in order to build their dashboards however they see fit or I can build them for them uh, just depending on how things are set up. Okay, so this was just part one. Uh, there's plenty more to get to. You can uh, look up Avalanche Connect Part 2, Connecting Your CRM. That's coming soon in the Acme Academy. It's free to sign up and subscribe. Uh, in Part 2 of the series, we'll talk about batch loading CRM data, managing keys, inserts, updates, and upserts, scheduling CRM data integrations for periodic updates, and capturing events for time-critical data. Um, like important meetings or important outcomes or opportunities close that fire off some sort of a fulfillment process down the line. Uh, event processing becomes a pretty important part of your data warehousing strategy. So hopefully your takeaways are eliminate the traditional costs of having to manage a separate enterprise data integration product from your data warehouse. Uh, simplify your warehouse deployment you have one platform, one application, a single pane of glass, and that should accelerate your ability to provide value to, from your distributed and diverse data sources to your analytics customers. How can you get started? Sign up for Avalanche, free $500 credit. Um, you can also download the Avalanche client runtime either from your warehouse details, you'll see links there, or you can download it from our electronic software delivery platform. Uh, you can also download the Data Connect IDE as preparation for our next session, and that allows you to build some really rich and complex data integrations with uh, whatever business logic you may need. Uh, and many out-of-the-box connectors, like we talked about, Salesforce.com, NetSuite, SQL Server, Excel, Oracle, MySQL, many more. Thanks for your time today.